So when I sharpen the blade then, what I do is I bring the sawmill all the way over as far as it'll go there, right to the end, and stop. I open up both the covers. If the covers are, if it's really dirty inside there, I'll do something with that. Um, it's not, there's just very, very little sawdust in there. That's about it. So anyway, I'll tighten up on the, the uh, blade. Because when that's tight, when the blade is tight, it makes it a lot easier for me to work with as far as sharpening. If the blade is loose, you tend to sharpen uh, sort of on a different angle than you would sharpen if the blade was tight. For tight, for uh, doing the blade, let me just get some of these tools here out of the way. Some of this stuff. Okay, so what I like to do is, uh, well, let me show you the tools first. Show you what I have here. Okay, so as far as the tools go, this is a hundred years old. It's used for bending the blade up or down, depending upon which way you face it. It bends it in that direction. So if I put it on here, it's going to bend up. I turn it around, it bends down. That's to set the teeth. Okay, so that's one thing I have. The other thing I have is a little um, piece of stone here that I use to clean the edges, the inside edge of the blade off after I sharpen it. Now sometimes I use a file. It doesn't really matter which one you use. Um, I find that the stone gives me a little bit of a sharper edge at times. But that's sometimes it's just if you're in a hurry and you're not watching what you're doing, you end up kind of rushing things and sort of hurting yourself. I'm going to set some of these tools down here. And then the thing I use for sharpening is this. I got this at Tractor Supply. I used to have a different type, but anyway, what I like about this is I like the, the blade that's on here. If you can see it has a flat shape to it that goes like an angled shape to it, that makes it easy for me to sharpen the edge of the blade on that. Okay? And that's what I'll use to, to pull the blade or the, the, uh, the um, stone across the top of that. Depending upon how you want to word this or how you're looking at this, the teeth face that way all the time. They can't face this way, they won't cut. So they have to face that way. And what I do is I actually sharpen from the inside to the outside. And let me just show you that up a little bit closer. I don't know if I can get this better from the inside here or not. So here's how I do this. What I do is I get the seat comfortable so that I'm in a comfortable spot to sit here. And I turn the blade until I see the weld because the weld will tell me when I'm finished. So I look for the blade to be welded together. I'm, I'm turning the two wheels here to get this to come back to me. 
So the weld is right here. All right, so this is the welded spot of the blade. And uh, that's where I'll start doing my sharpening. So let me put this tool in the hook the air up to it. I have the air hose here, and then I'll show you how I do that. I tried making videos of this a lot of times, but you have to sort of be careful how you uh, do this because it's such a small area to work in. Let me just see if I can. Yeah, here we go. Alright, so if you look from where you're looking, you can see there's teeth that are sticking up and some aren't. And the way this thing goes is down one, up one, and one is flat. Now the way to tell the flat is to put this across and see where it's not raised up anywhere. So when I go here on this one, this one's raised up, okay, I can see underneath here like a dark shadow which means that this is up off the original blade so this one's up this one's down and this one's flat so it's starting at the weld now you can't you have to look at yours because it depends on where they welded it so this one here when I put the blade on there you can see it's flat on this metal until I get to the tooth edge right at the tooth edge it goes the tooth goes down so down up flat down up flat so that's what I say to myself as I go to be able to sharpen these so let me just make sure I have enough hose here okay so I start right at the weld so again so that I don't forget where I'm at I set my hands up here in such a way with my thumb and all that I can uh, hold and get the same type of a you know cut on each one what I'm looking for is to keep this square with the flat part of the blade. So in other words, I want this to go straight in there, in the middle of the wheel, not high, not low, right in the middle. And then when I rub over it, I can see it instantly whether it has a clean surface there or not. So... So when you do this, you want to look at every blade that you cut. Now, I don't know why I can do this by hand and some people just can't. But if you're like me, what I do is I, I'm actually letting my finger very lightly drag across the blade and it's grabbing my finger. That tells me that it's sharp. So then I just take the file take that edge off that went around or possibly went around and I just sharp I just kind of run this blade or those file over that a little bit and I run it so that the file is flat against the tooth now you can see that it's big enough for a person to see and that's as far as I've sharpened and when I go across that like this one wasn't sharpened and neither was this now they still have a little bit of grab, but not like this. Like, that is actually stopping me, whereas this one I can rub over it a little bit. I'm only doing this very lightly. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight teeth sharpened, and you could, you could tell it was only a matter of seconds. And then once I clean this up with this blade, I'm not doing enough to make the metal go around again. I'm just cutting it off. I just want it clean and nice and sharp. Okay, so, and that's all there is to it. That's what works for me. So I'm going to go down here. Um, let's see, that's sharp. Yeah, right here. This one's not sharp. So i got to go from there across here for a little bit.
Now the reason that it's slowing down a little is because a couple uh, months ago, I think two months or so ago, the motor on my big uh, air compressor blew and it doesn't work. So I'm using a small air compressor over there, so it might take a little longer for me to do that. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Go from here over. And, and, and what you want to make sure of <coughs> is when you're going across the blade here, that you're keeping <coughs> you're keeping the, the, the uh, cutter in such a way that you can see a nice smooth face here. Let me just shut the camera up and I'll... Okay, so what I'm trying to show you is um, if you look here, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but every one of these teeth um, to here is shiny. This is shiny, 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 shiny. And the reason for that is because when I hit, hit it, I'm, I'm hitting it straight on like this. Okay, and just coming off the edge. Now, what you don't want to do is roll around the tooth. You want to come away from it. So when you're when you're pulling this out, you know you just want to come on the tooth. Don't roll around the tooth, so you'll dull the blade even worse than it was when you started. Okay. So this is the last one here. So let's just see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm doing eight at a time. So, like I say, now we're going to file that down. And what you could do is you could do all the grinding if you want to really quickly. And then you could file everything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But you don't have to. You could do like I'm doing, you know, grind eight, file eight, or grind more. What I'm going to do is grind the whole thing from one bearing to the other. But I'm just doing this this way to show you. You want to keep this nice and straight. This works good for me. I mean, if you have another way of doing it and it works good for you, then do it. If you like sending them out, send them out. I don't care if you send them out. I, don't, I just don't want to have to wait for anything. That, that's the only thing that bothers me. Yeah, so each one of those teeth are grabbing my finger very well. Yeah. All right, so I'm done. Um, it's hard for me to see without the sun shining here. Let me turn this up a little. Yeah, I'm done to right here. Actually, this one. This one. Okay, right here. All right, so I'm done to there. Let me just make sure I sharpen this last one. And when I put this blade against that, I am making sure that I'm flat against where the flat part of the tooth is. Okay, so I'm flat against that tooth there. And that's what gives you that nice straight edge. And the straighter the edge is, the wider that tooth is at the very point, the nicer the cut. If you file it so that it's at a point, it's not going to cut as good. You want that thickness of the blade, and it's an eighth of an inch from the top to the bottom. You want that thickness there to keep that blade uh, in line with one another. Now let me just tell you something else too. Um, normally what I do is I run the, the sharpener around the whole thing, then file everything, and then I'll take this and I'll use this to up and down wherever I have to. Now, that's what I do when a blade that's sharpened the, probably the second or third time. Because I haven't hit anything with this blade, because the blade is still in good condition, I haven't hit anything with it, I'm not going to bother setting the teeth on this. If I was sharpening it for the third time, or if I hit something, you know, if I hit something and I knew it because I, ha I hit the metal piece here on my saw, then... I would uh, reset the, all of the teeth, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to sharpen, and um, that's it. Just sharpen them on one side with the grinder, the opposite side with the file, and then you, you, you'd be surprised. It's a very good blade. It runs and shine, cuts very nicely. So, anyway, guys, let me uh, do a couple more. I'm going to do a cross here so I can get done with this.
Okay guys, I see the camera had shut off. I'm not sure why it did. But anyways, what I want to say is, um, right now the air compressor that's running this tool is a small air compressor. And I used to use it for doing, you know, building houses, that type of a small compressor. But the thing is, is my big air compressor, the motor went on it, and we're just hanging on to our money for a while to see what's going to happen with this uh, viral. But anyway, um, so I just wait a little bit for this thing to catch up to me. I just want to see what you're seeing. If I want it to catch up to me, and then I'll do some more sharpening. Once you get the hang of how you hold this tool, and you can use a file to sharpen both sides if you want to. It's up to you. Depends on what you're good at, you know, what you're good with sharpening. But once you learn how to hold this thing, really, you, it's amazing how many um, cuts you'll get that are exactly the same. And the whole key to sharpening a blade is to have the exact cut, the exact width and everything the same. Now, you know, when you do your first blade, you're going to mess it up probably, but keep trying. I mean, blades go, you send them back $7 or whatever it is, I don't know, I think it's $7 to get them sharpened, it might be more. I'm just saying, the more you practice, the better you're going to get at this, and that's all there is to it. So right here's where I got to start. It's important that you see a straight line of shiny. If you see black along the face that you just sharpened, then you're not sharpening quite right. You've got to adjust this as you do it. And it doesn't take much off. And no, I'm not wearing glasses, but if you want to wear them, okay, I'm, I just can't see with the glasses on. So, and, and this little bit of spark coming off here is not much. So I'm not worried about it, but that's my own opinion. So anyway, when you go across here with this, with this uh, grinding tool, you want to make sure that you have a nice flat surface, that it's not black on the top. So in other words, like if this was a tooth, the top of this would be black, the top edge, or, or the middle might be black because you've gone down like on an angle like this. You want to hit this blade against the tooth straight so that when you pull it through there you get a nice flat edge. That's the best way to get the cut done. And then like I said again, I'm holding that blade so that I can't see any light between the file and the tooth sticking out there. It's hard for me to see the shiny part of the face when there's no sunlight. Usually the sun up until lunchtime is, will be, you know, shining right down here nice. Right before lunch is the best time to sharpen because the way the saw is sitting, because the sunlight hits it on an angle, and you can really see what you're looking at there really well. That air compressor, like I say, it's a small one. It doesn't really have the juice that it should have. It doesn't have the juice that it should have, but it'll it'll do okay. And then this fitting here doesn't want to work right either for me. 
Now I've seen guys use grinders to sharpen these. A regular bench grinder if you have the blade off of the thing. Off of the tool, off of the mill. Yeah. Nice. So that's good right to there then. Um, I just sharpen what I can. At this point it seems like eight, eight is a good number to sharpen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight would be a good number to sharpen too. And since I don't have any um, uh, marker with me, well, I guess that's not going to stay there. Maybe I can put a piece of paper towel on it. I just want to put something on here so I know where I end it. I know I can sharp from, sharp from there. I'm not taking that much metal off of here that this thing is really hurting these blades. I'm taking very small amount of metal off of this blade, just so you know. I usually can get seven sharpenings. So, in other words, this will be the first one on this blade. I can get seven more sharpenings, so you're looking at, you know, quite a few days of heavy duty cutting if that's what you're doing. Eleven of them this time. You can tell right away once you get a feel for this if you've missed something. Okay, it doesn't take much. <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then this one has sawdust on it, so that's good. So I'll just put this little rag around here again and just keep going. Alright. This blade is made here in a little bit of an angle. I really like this blade, this uh, cutter, but um, it's hard to find them. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be that exact angle. That angle is not doing anything back here. I'm just running the blade off the original angle. So even a flat blade will work on this. It's the face when you cut it with the uh, um, the uh, file that you want to have it on that the 10 degrees. See, when I put this on here, like you're looking pretty straight right there, I'm I'm on an angle there. I'm on a 10 degree angle with this file. It's, you know, straight would be more like this, but I'm going like that. It's not much, but it's enough for you to know. So all you gotta do is just keep track of what you're doing, and you'll get to the point where you're really good at it. One of the other things you want to do is make sure you wipe your blade off. I wipe it off on my pants. Of course, my wife doesn't like that, but that's what I do. 
Uh, if you have a towel with you, you might be able to do that. A rag is better than paper towel because the stuff is so sharp. See, when I push across there, it doesn't want to let me go by it. And I'm not pushing any harder on it. Like here, I can I can rub my finger over it, but like here where it's sharpened, I can't. And that's what you're looking for. So again, the rag goes on the one that you've last sharpened. Now if you had a flat blade, you may have to angle this a little more like that. I, I found the right angle for this thing is to be about where I have it. But you'll know because if you go in there and you rub this off the blade, if you don't get a nice clean piece of shiny metal from, from where you touched all the way to the edge of the tooth, then you know you're not doing it right. You have to get a nice shiny piece of metal there. good to hear now. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Well, I went a lot further than I would have. Normally, like I say, I'll go from one roller to the other. And you figure there might be six or seven of these to the whole uh, blade. And that's why it's fairly quick. I can probably sharpen a blade in less than 20 minutes now. When I first started doing them, it took me about an hour and a half. And they weren't even good. Now they're a lot better, real good, in fact. And I don't have to spend a lot of time on them. Grab yourself a marker instead of a freaking piece of paper towel like this. The marker will work better. I'm, I'm just using that because I don't feel like walking over to the garage again. happens um, I'll get about seven sharpenings and that's really close to what I'll get every time but what happens is after the seventh sharpening sometime during the progress of cutting the blade will break okay that's what usually happens it doesn't get to the point where it's dull that I stop using it I use it until it breaks If it's not broke, but the blade, like let's say I hit something with it, and I know I can sharpen the blade, I'll just cut it with a pair of thin snips and get rid of it, because I don't want it. If you hit something with the blade, like a nail or a rock that, you know, really grabbed the hold of it, you're better off throwing the blade away, trying to sharpen, sharpen them. It's going to be a waste of your time. So that's what I do. Now I'm not saying you can't sharpen them. 
it just seems like it takes too long to get it to where it ought to be. And let's say you knock the tip off of one. If I broke the tip off of one and the blades around it look okay, I'll sharpen through that. I mean, I don't mind if one blade is short. It's really not going to hurt anything. But if you have a bunch of blades that are goofed up, like I say, you know, you, you should just get rid of that. Don't even fool with that. It's not worth it. Unless you're down to one blade and that's all you have, you know, as far as blades. I've got about 50 or 75 blades in there, so I'm not really worried about that. But I still sharpen them, uh, you know, all the time. Now, if um, I have somebody here working with me and, you know, we're trying to get a lot of cutting done, then what I'll do is I'll take the blade and hang it somewhere and I won't... Um, necessarily sharpen it right away but I will sharpen it so that's what happens but when I'm doing it myself like this I just sharpen them as I need them every time the blade gets dull I resharpen it I'm not pushing it into the gullet. I'm pushing it this way. I'm pulling it. In other words, I'm not pushing it to make it deeper. I'm just cutting against the blade. The tooth is the face of the tooth. It's just straight edge. Sometimes I have to hit them more than two times, but I'm looking for it to get rid of the black that's on the tooth. So if, if I'm a little low with this or a little high, it'll tell me right away, and that's how I can find center when I get that first pass that's nice and straight across and give me a shiny tooth edge. See, when you don't hit anything and the tooth just gets dull from natural cutting, you end up with a blade that you can, a nice blade that you can cut with, or I mean file. When you, when you have something that you've hit something with, it's really hard to uh, find out where you need to do what, because you want to try to get all the teeth the same height sticking out from the blade, and that doesn't always happen. But working pretty nice on this blade. This blade will be good after I'm done sharpening it.
Yeah, 11 is all it wants to do before I need to give it a little pressure, a little break. One of the other things you can do too, um, if you look on the top here, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little bit of sawdust over there. If you hold your finger on the um, stone so that it doesn't go too far, you can get a lot of that sawdust stuff. But I found out that instead of fooling around trying to get the sawdust off of here, the best thing to do is just spray the wheels with uh, WD-40 or something like that and it takes that dust right off. It just comes right off of there, so there's no sense in even fooling with it. You want to watch if you're cutting and you slide over the tooth, then you might have to come back and go like this a little bit to straighten that tooth out. All you want to do is just sharpen a little bit there just to take any kind of rollover that might be on the tooth. If you go over the tooth, you're going over top of the straight edge that does the cutting. You don't want to do that. So if you, if you do go over it, then go ahead and straighten this out a little bit with that and then you'll be okay. You can see when I first go to start, and I don't know if you can hear it, but it's a little rough and hard to get going. Like you can hear a couple high tone cracks in the in the uh, file, but then it gets like a nice easy cut. You see that? How it's like you'll hear those noises. Once you have the nice file sound, then you're done. And you can sharpen this tooth like this with a file. If you have a good brand new file and it's cutting real sh sharp, this one isn't bad. If you're cutting really good, um, you can cut from one side and then do the other side. But I found out that with the hand file, because it cuts, a the file I have is a little coarse. So because of that coarseness that it has, it tends to cut too much metal off and I don't want to do that. So that's why I like using this little uh, grinder because the, the, the grinding grit is not that big. I'm not sure what that is. It's probably around, I don't know, maybe maybe 180 or maybe 80 or 100, something like that. I'm not sure what it is, but it works good. So we're almost done here. The uh, um, weld is right here.
So you can imagine, you know, all the times I stop and talk, when I start to sharpen a blade and I'm by myself and I'm not making a video of it, I won't stop. I'll just keep going. And that's why I say I can probably sharpen one in 20 minutes or less. It used to be about an hour. So probably two more things and uh, we'll be done with this blade and then I'll show you how it cuts then on my next video. So the weld is right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I don't think I'll get to the end there but this is where the weld is. Definitely can feel the difference there when it stops your finger. finished touching these up with the file and I'm done and I'm ready to cut. Okay, that's it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the mill back I'm going to shut the doors, move the mill back to where it goes because it feels like it's drizzling to me. But I'm going to move the mill back and then I'm going to run it and I'm going to spray oil on this to clean everything up. And I should be in good shape. Okay guys, so uh, thanks for watching this. I know I've made a m bunch of videos about sharpening. And if you're a good sharpener, I don't expect you to watch the video. But the new guys don't seem to search back through all the things that I've done and actually the newer ones are the better ones anyway so as far as video goes so thanks a lot for a lot for watching and um, like I said before I'm trying to make 30 minute videos so it doesn't take so long for me to upload them have a good one guys bye all right guys I'm gonna hang in there for another minute or two I want you to see what this looks like now and then I want you to see what it looks like after I uh, start it and run it. So just hang in there a second. you to see is how shiny that cleans that off by running some oil through there so now you're seeing it and um, let me just back up a little bit so you're seeing it there now and I spray the oil here under this wheel and right here and it cleans the wheels off nice and it also cleans the blade off and that's what I feel gives me nice straight cuts 
uh, being able to take care of it like that. So I'm just going to go ahead now, like I said, and push this thing back and then we'll be done for today.